do this evening is, to, is first outline the ten basic dogmas of materialism, the assumptions that materialists made. When they first made them, they were just assumptions or working principles, but they've hardened into dogmas. And they now have become an almost unchallenged belief system on which millions of people base their lives. Um, and what I need to do is first outline what the ten dogmas are, then what I do is turn the dogmas into questions and look at them scientifically. How well do they stand up to scientific scrutiny? Uh, how logical are they, how rational are they, and how well supported by the evidence? In other words, how scientific are the foundations of science? It turns out they're not very scientific at all. And what I'm arguing is that by questioning them, by opening up these questions, science itself is liberated from this dogmatic belief system and all sorts of new science becomes possible. Science that I think would be more exciting, more fun, more interesting and more life-affirming. Okay, well the ten dogmas are first that nature is mechanical, that everything is a basically a machine that the universe is a machine, the earth is a machine, animals and plants are machines, and we're machines. In Richard Dawkins' vivid phrase, we are lumbering robots. And our minds are nothing but the activity of genetically programmed computers, which are our brains. So that's the first starting point, really, for the mechanistic worldview. The second assumption is that matter is unconscious. The whole universe is made up of unconscious matter, it's just stuff, uh, with no mind, no consciousness, no awareness. Uh, of course, we're conscious, maybe some other animals are conscious, but basically we live in an unconscious universe. Thirdly, nature is governed by fixed laws. The laws of nature are fixed, they were the same at the moment of the Big Bang as they are today, and they'll be the same forever. And the constants of nature are also fixed. Fourth, the total amount of matter and energy is always the same. This is the principle of conservation of matter and energy, which anyone who's done GCSE physics or A-level physics will have learned at school. Um, and it's one of the most fundamental tenets of modern science. Fifth, nature is purposeless. The whole of the evolutionary process has no purpose or direction. Biological evolution is just a matter of blind chance mutations and natural selection. Sixth, heredity is material. What we inherit is material things, genes, epigenetic modifications, cytoplasmic inheritance, but inheritance is material, mainly genetic. Seventh, memory is material too. All your memories are stored as material traces somewhere inside your brain. This is not just an assumption in science, most people take it for granted too. A lot of these assumptions have become common sense assumptions that most people take for granted, even if they're not scientists and have never looked at the evidence. Eight, the mind is in the brain. Mental activity is brain activity. Your mind is inside your head, insulated inside the, uh, the bone of your skull. Ninth, psychic phenomena are illusory. They have to be, because if your mind's inside the brain, your intentions and thoughts can't possibly have an effect at a distance, other than through your words or actions. And tenth, mechanistic medicine is the only kind that really works. If your body's a machine and your mental activity is nothing but the activity of your brain, uh, then the only kind of medicine that's going to work is physical or chemical, surgery or drugs. So, these are the assumptions on which the modern scientific worldview is based, and which most proponents of it simply take for granted. They don't argue that these things must be true or look at the evidence, they just assume they are. And anyone who has a scientific education absorbs these assumptions by a kind of osmosis. Nobody actually stands up and says, here are the ten beliefs you've got to believe. They're just sort of absorbed uh, uh, without most people thinking about them. Most scientists take these assumptions for granted not because they've thought about them, but because they haven't. <laughs>